Uh, so welcome back to the channel. Hope everybody is doing well. The last few videos I've done have been reviews of these instruments as individuals. Um, so I thought I'd just do a final video on all these four uh, and put it all together to see which clamp I like the best. Now the review of these clamps was based around the cost differentials between them really. Uh, this one here, the Fleur CM46, is the most expensive in the range. In the UK it comes in at around £240. You can buy the Unity 216C here for about 50% of that one. You can buy this Kaiwitz HT208D for around about 50% of that one. And this Infurida YF570C can be picked up in the UK for around about 50% of that one so considerably more cheaper to buy this than it is to buy a Fleur CM46. Um, with regard to what you get with each of the clamps, each one has a case, you see them at the back here, they all come with a set of probes and a thermocouple as well. Um, in terms of quality, undoubtedly the best probes Belong to the Fleur CM46 here, um, silicon insulated, and they are uh, gold plated on the tips there as well with full GS38 caps uh, to protect the tips. Uh, next, probably, would be the leads from the Kaiwitz. Again, these are silicon and they do actually feel a little bit heavier duty than the um, leads from. Fleur, but they are not gold plated, uh, they're just standard leads, really. Uh, and then uh, definitely leads from the UT216C because they primarily have uh, GS38 caps on them as well. The but they are PVC insulated, those ones on the Infurida. There's no GS38 caps with these, um, and they are PVC. Uh, not the nicest of leads at all, but ironically, it probably has the most robust thermocouple with it. Um, steel tipped temperature probe there, really, uh, with a coiled flexi lead uh, as well. Uh, all the others are standard thermocouples, pretty much. Uh, these are the cheapo variety. I guess the Fleur one might be perhaps the, the best with the dual plug on the end. Um, they are all K type thermocouples, so they are all interchangeable with one another. Case-wise, uh, I guess it depends on exactly what you like. Um, the only case that's slightly hardened is this one from Kai Wheats, uh, branded up, got a little loop there to hold it by if need be. Um, so that's probably the best quality case in there. Second would go to the Fleur, I would imagine it's canvas, but it's a little bit padded to some extent. Um, uh, what have we got here? You probably, although this is unbranded uh, and looks pretty cheap and nasty, this one here for the Infura has probably got a bit better uh, padding than the one from uh, UniT there. Um, so yeah, definitely Kai weights for the case and uh, Fleur for the accessories. So with regard to the meters themselves, I guess you would also say uh, physically looking at these and handling them, the best quality seems to be coming from Fleur, the, the function switch, the detents. Um, it's quite soft, but it's very positive. Um, you've got the colorizing of the functions around the rotary switch that match the jacks there. And this does have the most functionality to it as well. A uh, fairly good, strong spring clamp on it. Um, that's the Fleur there. Um, second is very, very hard. It's, it's kind of between probably the Kai Wheats here and the Unity 216. There's not an awful lot between them with regard to build quality. Um, clamp is perhaps a bit stronger on the Unity. Um, again, the switch is quite positive and good to, to utilize. Um, it's a bit more effort to use the function switch on the Kai Wheats here. Um, but of course you do have this uh, display from Kaiwitz here, whereas all the others are LCD display. It depends which one you prefer. But in terms of physical construction strength, they're pretty much uh, the same. 
The only thing that you do get is to get probe holders on the back of this um, because this does have a live function that you can put the probe in there and use that for probing around. If you like, none of the other instruments have that. And in Fiorida, definitely the, the least quality uh, clamp. It's a very, very strong clamp on this. It needs a lot more effort to utilize the clamp than you do on the other instruments. Uh, the function switch is not the nicest. The detents are not too nice on that. There's no uh, the embossed arrow is the same colour as the switch, so it's not immediately obvious where it is. Um, but I guess it's you get what you pay for, don't you? Really, um, given the price of this in comparison, it's going to come in somewhere. Uh, and obviously, this one here has three input jacks. You have a, a separate jack for the temperature negative. Whereas all three of these units, they all have temperature functionality on them, but they all do it through the two jacks. Uh, jacks on the bottom on these two, whereas on the Fleur and the Infurida, they're on the front face. Um, I'll stick this table up. This is the number of functions that you've got uh, across the instruments. You can see that the Fleur here has the most functions at 21 functions. For uniqueness, this does have the DC microamps that we use for flame sensors on HVAC equipment. And it does have an averaging function on this for the current and voltage measurements as well. The Kiwiet, as I said, that does have a live probe function that none of the other instruments have. The Infuridor does have Bluetooth connection to the software. You've seen that in the video on it. So if you want to do remote data logging on this, this is the only instrument out of this collection I've got here that can do that. Uh, the Furidor also has the largest dual capacity as well in comparison to the other instruments. 30mm for all these three, 40mm dual capacity on the Infuridor there. Uh, so that's that table there, it gives you the functions. Obviously, well, there's just a number of functions. You have to look at the actual range of those functions. And when you look at Fleur, it actually has some of the lowest ranges available, uh, only up to 400 amps, which is the lowest out of this collection. Only up to 600 volts as well, which is again the lowest. Uh, resistance is 60 kilo ohms, which is another one that hits it, whereas all these three instruments are into the mega ohms. However, the Infurador does suffer with a low capacitance function, uh, as you can see from the table there. Um, so I'll pop this table out of the way and stick up the next table, which is the overall accuracy that I've obtained from carrying out the different tests of the functions on these instruments. Overall, the Fleur CM46 does have the best accuracy averaged over all the functions. In terms of the individual functions, it does have much better accuracy on the current functions than any of the other three instruments. Um, Kiwiet here did struggle with accuracy on the current function. However, it does have the best accuracy for both the voltage and the capacitance functions. The UT216C claims the best accuracy for resistance measurements. Um, but it does struggle with some of its other functions. Average wise, these two come out pretty much the same in practice. There won't be anything significantly different with them. Uh, the cheapest meter here, the Infurador, does come out with overall the worst accuracy. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is just a bit of a clear up. And I'm going to actually open up all of these instruments to look at the input protection and the general build inside. Um, all three of these instruments are claiming uh, Cat3 rated protection on the inputs. For the FLIR, you have um, independent certification from two or three labs. For the UNITY, you have independent certification just for the one Intertech lab. Uh, the Kiwiets and the Infurida don't appear to have any independent certification on the input protection whatsoever. Okay, so everything is opened up. You can see them all laid out in front of you here. First impressions. All the boards look to be actually pretty clean uh, and not too much, and there aren't too many concerns with regards to the soldering or flux residue left behind uh, or anything like that, really. Uh, what we'll do is we'll zoom into each one individually so we can get a bit better look at the protection. Um, and I think what we'll do is we'll start off with the cheapest. Okay, so here's our Infurido clamp. You can see here, I see the three separate jacks on the input and you can see that they are split type soldered directly onto the board 
the high voltage input is this one here. And if I can get in close enough, you can. You can hopefully see that there is actual fat an isolation slot around the input on that, uh, which is a plus one. And then when you come along here, you see there is one quite small PTC. That's all the input protection I can find on that unit. Um, no sign of any varistors for over voltage protection whatsoever. Um, so yeah, not the best, um, but at least there is evidence of some there. Uh, voltage dropper resistor looks to be probably a number of resistors rather than one large individual one. The main IC there is cobbed, uh, so you can't tell what that is. And we've got some trimmer pots here, so it looks like you could actually do some form of calibration. One, two, three there. There is a further one just up here as well. Okay, so that's the Infuridu unit. Uh, not brilliant input protection, but it could have been quite a bit worse, I would imagine. So we'll slide him out of the way, and we'll move in with the Kaiwitz. So this is the Kaiwitz unit. Again, pretty good, clean board in there. Um, the jacks are actually soldered. Uh, the coming at the end, so they're soldered onto the board uh, directly there. If you look at their split type as well, I'm not sure how well you will see that. Because uh, it doesn't want to focus, does it? Um, with regards to input protection, a little bit closer. Um, there are two PTCs here. There doesn't look to be any form of isolation slots around any of the inputs. Um, there is no sign of any varistors, and uh, the dropper resistors probably. There might be one big one there uh, off of the input, uh, and then these two smaller ones. As with the uh, Infurida, we've got a cobbed main IC there, so we can't tell what that is. Um, but there's a couple of calibration pots further up this end that might be able to do some uh, trimming with. Might be worth looking into that uh, because this is the one that does struggle with the accuracy on the high current readings. Um, but in terms of input protection, I would probably put this one under the Infurida. I think the Infurida with its isolation slot, although you've got two PTCs on this one. So yeah, that's the Kaiwitz for you. Uh, in my opinion, it's not much better than the Infurida really. So we'll slide him out of the way and move into our UNI-T. So our UNI-T, um, it's the second most expensive instrument that we've got uh, for this review. And you can immediately see similar sort of design to the Kaiwitz unit with the jacks coming out of the base there. Um, these ones, they are soldered on tags. There's my camera. Soldered on tags there uh, and they're actually screwed into the base of that one there. Um, again, pretty clean board, no not much evidence of flux or solders, a little bit around the input jacks, um, but over the rest of the board it's fine. Um, both the ICs are available on this, so you could actually uh, identify them if you want to. And with regards to input protection, you can quite clearly see this is our high voltage input. Um, we've got three varistors in this section up here and then up here looks like we've got a little PTC just in that part there um, so much better input protection than the two previous units uh, although there doesn't appear to be any isolation slots around there um, but I could go for cat 3 uh, it's probably believable um, and the dropper resistor for the input this is the high voltage input and there's your main dropper resistor leading into this bank of resistors here as well. So that's the Uni T216C. A uh, we'll brief look at that one in there. Yeah, it does look to be a more accomplished unit than the other two, as you would expect with having the higher price. So that's him out of the way. Now we move finally onto our Fleur CM46. Uh, now for this one, I've actually had to remove a third screw and move this board here to get to the input protection because the input is on a completely different board to the rest of it which we're actually getting on towards cat 4 protection there and if I get them in the center so you can actually see you can see I've got three varistors in there 
and a couple of PTCs that all add up to the protection. And there's some other dropper resistors there from the high voltage input. Uh, and as I say, on a separate board, not only that, with the board flipped over, hopefully you can quite clearly see the isolation slot arrangement, multiple isolation slots around this little separate board. So you can't argue with that. That's much, much better input protection than any of the other three units appear to be offering. Um, you've got a little bit of plastic shielding in this one as well. Um, again, your ICs, there's no cobbing on any of your ICs, so you can identify them should you want to. Um, input jacks are soldered direct onto that board. Um, and then as we move along, it also looks, looks like we've also got open case calibration here on this unit as well, uh, which is quite surprising. It was only the UT216C didn't appear to have any, uh, any calibration pots, so that will maybe done electronically, but all the others uh, appear to be have the potential for some calibration. So yeah, that's the uh, insides of the Fleur CM46. Uh, I think top marks to that one. I think that one wins it quite easily, really. Okay, well, I shall uh, reassemble these units and bring the video to a close. Okay, so we're all back together. To summarise up uh, over the, the whole series of videos that have been over these instruments, um, I do use the Unity 216C as part of my battery testing uh, bag. Uh, it sits in that. Looking at the test results, I would probably be better off putting the Fleur CM46 inside. That, has, that gives better accuracy on DC than that one does. Um, however, it's a fairly respectable meter. Input protection appears to be there certainly much better than these two units. So if I didn't have the Fleur available to me, I would be happy to continue using that one really. I don't see too much of an issue with it. So for me, either of these two units are workable, but you quite clearly see what you're paying for. I know this is double the price of that instrument, but when you look at the input protection that you've got on there, the build that you've got on there, the functionality and the accuracy, you can see why you're paying so much more money for that rather than the Unity. Certainly the Fleur name will probably add to it, but I don't think it is just that. I think it is justifiably a more expensive unit than any of these other three units. Um, so he's first, followed by the Unity 216C. I think it's fairly respectable. Um, Kai Wheats, a bit of a shame. I do like the display on that unit. It's a fairly reasonably robust build. The input protection there um, just doesn't appear to be there very well for me. I think that could be improved a lot more. It also suffered with the accuracy when measuring high currents. Um, so if you solve those two, I think Kaiwitz have got a very good challenger, certainly to the Unity 216C, perhaps not so much for the Fleur. But overall, it is fairly good functionality, just needs a bit more work to it to, to bring it up to a higher standard of implementation. Uh, lastly, the Infurida, you can tell why it's the cheapest unit there, certainly input protection wise. It's down at, again at the bottom end with the, the Kaiwitz there. Um, certainly room for improvement with that. Um, the diode test function on this was absolutely diabolical. Not very good at all really. Um, and obviously we struggled huge with battery life on this. Um, the effect of a reduced battery voltage having on the accuracy of the instrument. That was quite surprising. You don't get that with any of these other units. They, they will um, reduce their battery alarm up to say you need to change the batteries before you start getting bad readings, whereas this was the other way around. You had no way of knowing that you'd had a, had a reduced battery voltage that was affecting the readings. I, I kind of only work that out because I test these in the manner that I do, injecting specific currents, expecting to get a specific value out. If you're out in the field, not 100% sure of what current reading you were going to get, then you could be misled by this Infurida quite easily. Okay, so that's it for this video. I'll quite happily stick with the Unity and the Fleur. Although it's been a very interesting uh, set of comparisons for me to do. I uh, hope you've enjoyed it as well and found it useful. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you again in the next video.